Let's uh, see if Barzinho holds matters up. No, he doesn't. Straight on him. And so they're set. The red lights are flashing. The running of race seven. All in. The heavily backed giraffe. Now 175 and the starter said go. He let them run and Barzinho went straight to the tail end of the field. Kingdom and Empire and also the great Southerner Naturalist, the first to get going. Over Belter who's going to push up and settle down on the inside soon after the start. Around him goes Capanda. Then came Giraffe. Just getting up onto the bridle slightly in the early stages. Warbrook on the rails next and then came Double Digit. And two lengths behind them when they go by the 1,000. Barzinho, Kingdom and Empire with Mitchell trying to slow them down. Down, coming along the riverside of the track led the way. It's Kingdom and Empire by a length over Naturalist but they're running it. Uh, about two and a half lengths away then came Capanda over on the inside Warbrook going up just in front there of Belter Giraffe patiently ridden back in the field but there's been enough top end speed double digits down on the inside and ridden along. In fact scrub with his ears off back there in the field as they come to the corner is Barzinho 450 left to go though Kingdom and Empire will straighten up in front but they made good time. Naturalist is running second. Now to the outside. Capanda Giraffe commences his run on the outside of Belter. Double digit went back towards the inner. At the 200 Kingdom and Empire tackled by Capanda. Here comes Giraffe. He's starting to wind up though. At the 150 and Giraffe on the outside got his head in front of Capanda. He's doing better than them and it's a hat trick for Giraffe and they didn't forget to back him either. Giraffe beat home Capanda. Big run Barzinho from last getting home well. He's there with Belter. Also close up double digit and Kingdom and Empire in a tight go for minor placings. Naturalist the centre and back there towards the tail is Warbrook. Giraffe, number eight, ridden by Chris Parnham, giving Chris the second leg of a winning double. Joins Jared Noski as a multiple winning rider this afternoon. Cool ride, sat back, but he had plenty of pace on there up in front and brought him to the outside to complete a winning hat-trick today, this son of Hallebeck, beating Capanda, and I think Naturalist holds third in a blanket finish in front of the fast finisher, Barzinho. Number eight, Giraffe for the Mungrup Stud Syndicate, managed by Anne Williamson Croucher, trained by Neville Parnham, and winner number two today for Chris Parnham, 160-104, heavily commissioned, 215 into 175, and beats Capanda number three by McFlirt from Oleander, Sean O'Donnell for the Kayla Farrell Yard. A dollar night he placed dividend. And for Naturalist, the Fastnet Rock Damodar Gilding from the Albany Yard of Kevin Allen and written by Randy Tan to pay $4.70 when they do become official. So it's three in a line for Giraffe, promising horse, just working his way through the classes. And he dominated late in the race. 1.24.2.2, the time that they posted for the 1,400 metres. Well, he gave the leaders about three at the 200. He picked them up pretty well. Capanda couldn't go with Giraffe Naturalist. Well, he stuck to his task very well, the horse from the Great Southern. A length and a quarter, a long neck with the margins. 8.341 with Barzino fourth and Belter fifth in the seventh for the day. The last is the St. Patrick's Race Day, 17th of March handicap. At 22 after 5 o'clock, Sean McGrutty on one, push to past. And Kate Fitzgerald rides nine, Wave Hill Spur. The sectional, 36.13. And uh, punters right on the money there with Giraffe Wes Cameron, who completes a winning hat-trick, and it's a double for Chris. Yeah, Chris is riding in very good form. And uh, thanks, Darren. Chris riding in very good form. He's father with me, Neville. Uh, just before we talk about the horse tree, the price was uh, pretty tight. Yeah, you must have had your money on him today, I think, Wes. But uh, he was a lot shorter quote than I would have expected. But um, he uh, he won like he like his price, so he did a good effort. You made some very important points before the race. One of those being that uh, Chris thought that if he could settle back in the field, we'd see a better race horse, and that's what we saw. That was a, an emphatic win. Yeah, there was a lot of top-end speed today and we thought we might finish up in a similar spot to we've been racing. Um, but I didn't give Chris any real instructions, you know, I just let him work it out for himself. But he's made that comment to me that he thought he would be better uh, chasing. Uh, so, you know, with a, as much speed as there was in the early part of the race, he was able to sort of uh, settle him a bit further back and he got a nice uh, track up. Uh, had to probably go out a little bit 
uh, wider than he was probably hoping to, I would have thought. But, um, yeah, it was just put, to put him in the race. But, yeah, he put him away quite nicely. He did. You also mentioned that uh, you believe that he is a Saturday horse and this was a good uh, starting point for him. And it certainly was because he's obviously got ability and uh, he may even be able to get out over a bit further. I think in the long term he will. You know, he's still in his infancy as a, as a racehorse. So um, I think, you know, maybe in next preparation we might sort of look at something like that. But for the time being, he's chipping away at the 14, so we might extend him out to 16 if, he's, uh, if there's a race suitable to him. But as you say, he, he's probably got to a Saturday class a bit quicker than I was anticipating. But I uh, did have him in during the week and he, he drew wide, so I scratched him and put him in this race. And... Um, uh, initially, he didn't draw super, but with the number of scratchings and then further late scratchings at field, field of eight, it certainly was uh, inviting. Mm. It certainly was. And uh, you've got Dark Prospect lining up in the final event. Uh, the, the first up run was good. There were a few excuses there. Oh, look, he, you know, he's another promising horse. I think he'll, he'll come around, but he's, uh, he's having a big step in, in grade today. But um, I think he's up to the task. Not sure if he's quite up there today, but he's he, he's a work in progress as well, and I think he'll finish up being a pretty good horse in the long term over a journey. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. A riding double for uh, Chris Parnham, who uh, was more than happy to settle back with uh, Giraffe, and uh, he came home with a good rush. That was a strong victory. It was, yeah. He, uh, he's an, he's a nice horse. He never he never wins like uh, you could, you're probably going to get too carried away with it, but he always gets the job done. So. Um, yeah, good to get, it, get another win today. His two wins prior, both were very good. The, the blinkers were added to his gear, obviously have assisted him, but uh, he won both of those races well, and today it was a step up in grade, and he matched it well. Yeah, he did, and uh, he gave him a bit of a start. I, I, I was probably a little bit further back than I anticipated from the good barrier, but uh, he, he, um, he powered over the top of him like a good horse. He gives you a good feel. Yeah, he does. Uh, like I said, he, he, sort of, he probably hits the front and just waits for him a little bit, so... He's not completely running through the line, so I think he's, that's probably a good thing. He's still a lot to learn, so um, he's a nice horse going forward. Beautiful result. Thanks, Wes. Chris Parnham and a success with Giraffe. You'll hear Chris tomorrow morning on the Sunday Aftermath on Tab Radio discussing his winning rides and, for that matter, his losing rides as well.